In this lecture, we're going to pick up where we left off in number 10. We're going to explore those phasers again. We're going to take a second look at impedances with an emphasis on some of the things that we've done in lab. We're going to look at the calculations for series parallel circuits where we rely very heavily on our calculator. And we'll conclude with a brief introduction to AC power. You'll recall that we talked about inductors and capacitors. We mentioned the reactance of an inductor as 2 pi, the frequency of the circuit, by L, which is in units of Henry's. Then we talked about the capacitive reactance, where we said that is equal to 2 times pi by the frequency of the circuit by the capacitance. The reactance has units of ohms, and like resistance, Reactance is the opposition to the flow of current. The difference, of course, is that inductors and capacitors store energy while the resistors burn it. To talk about a resistor that burns energy, is to say that you have a resistor with a current flow, and that resistor is giving off energy in the form of heat. And once it's given off, it cannot be returned. Whereas the capacitor and the inductor store energy on an AC circuit, that energy will slosh back and forth between the generator and the reactive element. And reactive elements are capacitors or inductors. We've seen this in two different places. We've talked about the energy stored in an inductor. So that's energy is equal to one half the inductance by the current squared. And for a capacitor, the energy is equal to one half by the capacitance voltage squared. This energy storage is reflected in graphs such as this, where we have time. For the inductor, the current will start at zero and then rise to some maximum value, whereas in a capacitor, it'll start at some high value and decay to zero as the capacitor is charged. So this here is current in the inductor, current in the capacitor. The voltage on an inductor will start at some value and then drop to zero. Whereas in the capacitor, the voltage will start at zero and then rise up to some maximum value. So this is voltage in an inductor and voltage in a capacitor. We had a mnemonic to help us remember this. In the inductive circuit, we talk about Eli, where the voltage is seen to lead the current. So here's the voltage definitely ahead of the current. And on the capacitive side of the house, we talked about ice. So in a capacitive circuit, the current, which is right here, is seen to increase before the voltage does. Again, all of this is a consequence of that energy storage that happens in the inductor or the capacitor. So far, we've been focused on reactance, and that's good, but it's not enough. And the reason it's not enough is actually because of the charts right in front of you. Reactance doesn't account for the different way that an inductor stores energy when compared to a capacitor. We would say that reactance is only a magnitude. It has no knowledge of direction. What we need instead is impedance. The definition of impedance is almost identical to that of reactance. It is the opposition to the flow of current. But it accounts for the nature of the inductor versus the capacitor. 
you could say that impedance has both magnitude and direction. You could even say that impedance is a vector. If we were to look at the real imaginary plane, we would say inductors live on the real axis, capacitors live on the negative imaginary axis, and inductors live on the positive imaginary axis. So now if we talked about a point, for example, right here, we would say this point has both resistive real properties and inductive properties. Whereas if we had a vector in this direction, we would say that that is pure capacitive. Our equations for impedance actually depend on the reactance. So we see that the impedance, Z, of the inductor is JXL. You remember that the inductive reactance is 2 pi FL, which puts us here on the imaginary plane. Now you could also express that as the impedance of the inductor is the reactance of the inductor at a phase angle of 90 degrees. Again, both forms would describe this line. We have a similar situation for the capacitor, where the impedance, let's say the Z, of the capacitor is equal to negative Jxc. Suppose you had a vector like so, you would say that's negative J. Or you could say the impedance of the capacitor is the capacitive reactance at a phase angle of negative 90 degrees. In either case, it has units of ohms. You should recognize that all of the rules we learned for DC also apply to AC. For example, when we talked about a series circuit, we would say that the total series impedance is equal to the sum of the individual impedances. In a parallel circuit, the inverse of the total impedance is equal to the inverse of the individual impedances. Ohm's law applies as well. Where we have the voltage over the current by the impedance. So we'd say voltage is equal to a current times impedance. We'd say a current is equal to a voltage divided by an impedance, and an impedance is equal to a voltage divided by the current. We have the power law, and we'll touch on this at the very end of this video. We'll say the complex power is equal to the complex conjugate of the current by the voltage vector. KVL, KCL hold. The voltage divider holds. So the voltage of interest is equal to the resistor of interest over the total series resistance by the source voltage. And the current divider holds. The current of interest is equal to the total parallel piece over the resistor of interest by the source current. In our last lab, we did apply these properties. You remember the opening move on this problem was to calculate the reactance of the capacitor. So that's 1 over 2 pi, not 60 hertz here, by the capacitance. So that's 5 microfarad. We can put that into the calculator. So that's 2 times 
pi times 60 times 5, and you use this 10 or this x10x x button, x10x, and then you go negative 6 because it's micro, and then you invert that. So that is 530, so that's approximately, I should say, it's approximately 530 ohms. The impedance of the capacitor is 530 ohms at a phase angle of negative 90, or we could just say negative J530. We'll just draw a line through this and we'll say negative J530. The total impedance is easily calculated as the resistor in series with the capacitor. We can calculate the current, and that is a voltage over the impedance. Remember Ohm's law from your note card. We have a voltage, a current, and an impedance. And using the cover-up method, this is what you'll determine. So that's 5 volts at a phase angle of 0 degrees over 530 minus J530. We could solve for this current using our calculator. We would key that in as 5 at a phase angle of 0 degrees. Of course, we didn't need to put the zero in there, but it's good practice. Divided by 530 minus 530J. And then close the parenthesis. Now, this is the answer in rectangular form. So that's 4.7 plus J 4.7. And that's fine, except that's not what your meter is going to read. And to get what your meter reads, you want to go shift, complex, and put it into polar form, which is number three here. So this is what your meter would read. So the current is 6.7 milliamps at a phase angle of 45 degrees. All right, so that is this current that is circulating around in the system. At this point, it's useful to use that current to calculate the voltage drop across each component. In fact, that's what we did in the lab. And I believe this meter read 3.5 and this meter read 3.5, which is rather interesting because the sum of the meters would suggest that the source is not 5. We can calculate the voltage on the resistor as a current by an impedance. So in this case, we'll use that 6.7 milliamps at a phase angle of 45 degrees, and we'll multiply that by the impedance. In this case, the impedance of the resistor is simply the resistance. And if we cue that into our calculator, it looks like we already have the current on the display. We'll multiply that by 530, which gives us 3.5 volts at an angle of 45 degrees. We can do the same calculation for the capacitor. Again, it's a current times an impedance. We have the same current because it's a series circuit. And this time, the impedance of the capacitor is negative J530. We can enter that on the calculator as parentheses 0 0.0067, phase angle 45, multiplied by 530, correction, negative 530J. And that gives us, in polar form, Three point five at an angle of negative forty-five. 
And if we were to add those two together, we should see that they are five volts at a phase angle of approximately zero degrees. Let's give that a try. So 3.5 at a phase angle of 45 plus 3.5 at a phase angle of negative 45 equals 4.9, which is approximately 5 volts. So that holds true. Specifically, what we just said is that Kirchhoff's voltage law is served. The summation of the voltages in a closed loop is equal to zero. If we were to plot this using phasers, we'd end up with a diagram that looks like this. We have the real piece. We have the voltage on the resistor. So there's the voltage resistor. That's 3.5 volts at a phase angle of 45 degrees. So there's the 45 degrees. We have the voltage on the capacitor, which is also at 45, except this time negative. So the voltage on the capacitor, and that's 3.5 volts at a phase angle of negative 45 degrees. And then we have the source voltage, which was 5 volts at a phase angle of 0 degrees, which is the intersection of all these. There is your voltage vector. So volt source, 5 volts at a phase angle of 0 degrees. So again, it does look like Kirchhoff's voltage law holds true. And back here, when we said that 3.3, plus 3.3 is equal to 5, you are absolutely correct when you accounted for the angles. We could have used the voltage divider for this. So the voltage of interest is the impedance of interest over the total series piece by the source voltage. In this example, the voltage on the resistor is equal to 530 over 530 minus J530 by 5 at a phase angle of 0 degrees. Let's run that through the calculator. So parenthesis 530, close paren, divided by 530 minus 530J, close, equals, and then you multiply that by 5 at a phase angle of 0 degrees, and we get the same answer as before. Shift to polar mode, and there it is, 3.5 at an angle of 45. And just for good practice, let's do the same for the voltage on the capacitor. In this case, the impedance of interest is, what is it? Let's see, let's go way back up here. Yep, there it is. It's that negative J530. That's negative J530 over the series impedance, so 530 minus J530, by the source. For practice, we'll run that through our calculator as negative 530J divided by 530 minus 530J, close the parentheses, equals, and you multiply that by 5, at a phase angle of 0 degrees, and we'll shift to polar form, because that's what our meter will read. And there it is. We have 3.5 volts at a phase angle of negative 45 degrees. For some more practice, we'll work another example. These are the same values as we used before. So our opening move would be to calculate the impedance. And we've already calculated that as negative J530. Our total parallel impedance can be calculated like so. We can solve that using the calculator. Be sure to use the parentheses here. So 530, close paren, inverse, plus, parenthesis, negative 530J, parenthesis, and now invert that. Be sure you put the parenthesis around the entire impedance, 
If you don't, you can end up inverting only a piece of the impedance, giving you the wrong answers. Anyway, we set that equal, right? So now we invert, and there is our total impedance. So 265 minus J265, and that is ohms. Again, that's the parallel piece. You could think of this as the box. From there, we can calculate the current. So a current is a voltage divided by a impedance. In this case, it's 5 volts over 265 minus J265. 5 divided by parentheses 265 minus 265J close paren equals. We'll put that into polar form. So our current in this case is 13.3 milliamps at a phase angle of 45 degrees. If you're curious, you can calculate the current on the resistor using the same formula. In this case, it is 5 divided by 530. And the current on the capacitor is 5 over negative J530. So 5 divided by 530 gives us 9.4 milliamps. And all that's at an angle of zero because the resistors lie on the real plane. For the capacitor, you would say 5 divided by negative 530J. Right, so this is 9.4I. If we put that into polar form, there we go. So that's 9.4 milliamps at an angle of 90 degrees. We can plot this on the real imaginary plane. The resistor would be here. So current resistor at 9.4 milliamps. The current for the capacitor would be here. And that again is 9.4 milliamps, but this time it's J. 9.4 milliamps. We can also plot the source current. So the current on the source, and that is 13.3 milliamps at a phase angle of 45 degrees. For this problem, we could have used the current divider. Recall that the current divider tells us the current of interest is equal to the total impedance of the parallel piece over the impedance of interest by the source current. In this case, the current on the resistor is that 265 minus J265 over 530, because that's the impedance of the resistor, multiplied by the source current. In this case, it was 13.3 milliamps at a phase angle of 45 degrees. Let's see if we can put that through the calculator. So parentheses, 265 minus 265J, parentheses, divided by 530 equals, and we're going to multiply that by the current. So 0 0.0133 at a phase angle of 45 degrees. And there we are. It's completely real at 9.4 milliamps. We do the same thing for the capacitor. The total parallel piece over the impedance of the capacitor, negative J530, by the current. And you cue that into the calculator as 265 minus 265J close the parenthesis, divided by negative 530J, and then you multiply that by the current. 
which gives us 9.4 milliamps at a phase angle of 90 degrees. And these are the same results we obtained earlier. Let's work one more example and then we'll call it a day. Hundred and twenty volts, sixty hertz, five millihenries, twenty ohms, and thirty three millihenries. We'll call this inductor one, resistor one, and inductor two. Your opening move is to calculate the reactants on each device. So the reactants on L1 is 2 pi by 60 by 0 0.005, 2 times pi times 60 times 0 0.005, so that's 1.89 ohms. And the reactants for L2 is 2 pi 60 by 0 0.033, 2 times pi times 60 times 0 0.033, so that is about 12.4 ohms. And we can go straight from the impedance to the reactants, so we would call this J. 1.89, and we would call this one J12.4. Next, we calculate the total impedance as J1.89 plus the parallel of 20 and J12.4. Let's see if we can run that through the calculator. So. 20 inverse plus 12.4 J inverse equals inverse equals. So that takes care of this box. What we need to do now is add the imaginary piece, or excuse me, we need to add this piece right here. So 1.89 J and we add that. And we end up with 5.55 plus J10.8. And that is ohms. The source current is calculated as a voltage over an impedance. In this case, it's 120 volts. That's at a phase angle of zero degrees over 5.55 plus J 10.8. So we already have that impedance loaded up here, so we're going to divide by 120 equals, but it's upside down because of that, so now we invert that. And we shift it into polar form because that's what the meter reads. And it tells us that the current is equal to 9.8 amps at a phase angle of negative 63 degrees. And always remember to put your currents into polar form because that is what the meter reads. As we end this lecture, let's take a quick look ahead and explore power. We define complex power as the complex conjugate of the current multiplied by the voltage. Here, this complex conjugate simply means flip the sign. If we apply that to this problem, we would say the complex power is our current, so 9.8, but take the complex conjugate of that, so it would be 9.8 at a phase angle of 63. See, we just flip the sign. Instead of saying negative, we said positive. Then we multiply that by the voltage. We run that through the calculator as 9.8 at a phase angle of 63 degrees 
by 120, which gives us about 530 plus J, I will call that a thousand. And the units for that are volts and amps. So we had volts here and we had current there. So VA. In future videos, we'll talk about this piece being real power and this piece being reactive power. In this example, this is the real power that the resistor burns. And the reactive power is the imaginary power flowing into and out of the inductors.